Peace and blessings, fam. So the Bible says that the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, is the name above every other name. Jesus has many names and titles, um, such as the Great I Am, the Conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lord of the Sabbath, the Great High Priest. Um, he is the Lamb of God. And that's what I want to look at today in this video. Um, Jesus being the Lamb of God. What is that? What does that mean? The Lamb of God. Um, well, basically it's pointing us to Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and to understand some of these things, we need to go on a little journey. So we're going to start in the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, where, long story short, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Um, they was told not to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden, and they did. Um, and through that, they found that they was naked, um, you know, and tried to cover their nakedness with leaves. When God basically put it on them, um, you know, he made garments of skin, made of animal skin, um, for Adam and Eve, and he clothed them, yeah? So, from the beginning, we see that Adam and Eve sinned, God killed an animal, or maybe animals, and clothed Adam and Eve, if you like, covered them, or covered their sin. Um, so, from early, we see that for for us to be forgiven something has to die um and the book of hebrews confirms this hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says in fact the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness um so fast forward the israelites or the hebrews um just before they left Egypt, God sent a plague, the angel of death, into Egypt. And he instructed Moses to tell his people to kill a lamb, to eat all of the lamb, and to um, put the, bloods, the, the lamb's blood on the door, to, to cover the door with lamb's blood. And when the angel of death sees the blood of the lamb on the door, it will pass over the children of Israel and they will be protected. Um, and that is something that the Jews still remember to this day. Um, they still celebrate the festival of Passover. At the same time, um, the, West, the Western world celebrates the festival of Easter um, because it happened at the, the same time. Different times of history, but at the same date, if that makes sense. Around the same date, if that makes sense. So, um, fast forward a bit. You know, somewhat 100 years, few hundred years. Um, and the Jews are given God's law, what we know as the Ten Commandments. God sets up an institution of worship a way they should worship. They worship at the temple. There's a sacrificial um, system in place where um, once a year, the Jews offer a sacrifice to God, um, normally a lamb, um, brings it to the temple and the high priest will take that sacrifice and will offer that sacrifice unto God. Um, the sacrifice has to be perfect so, um, you know, the book of Deuteronomy says in chapter 15, verse 21, but if it has any blemish, meaning the sacrifice, if it is lame or blind or has any serious blemish whatsoever, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. So this system went on for, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, once a year, on the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, 
as the Hebrews would call it. They would bring a sacrifice, preferably a lamb, you know, without spot, wrinkle or blemish. Or, you know, but God is a gracious God. So if you couldn't afford a lamb for whatever reason, if he was poor or something, whatever you could bring, um, you know, there was things that was, they had a list of things that you could bring um, that was acceptable to God. But nonetheless, once a year you would do this um, in the hope that God would accept your sacrifice and forgive you for your sins. Um, and yeah, this went on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years until, bam, one day Jesus rose up and then he flips the script. But before we look at what Jesus did and how he flips the script, let's talk about a man called John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was a man, he was a godly man sent from God. He was a prophet. A prophet is someone who hears directly from God. And basically, John the Baptist was in the wilderness, preaching, telling people, basically, listen, fix up, repent. The Messiah is coming. He was making the way for the Messiah. Um, he was baptizing people with water in the River Jordan. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit of the Gospel of John. Um, the Gospel of John isn't John the Baptist, by the way, it's the Apostle John. But um, yeah, I'm going to read a little bit of John's Gospel about John the Baptist, where he's talking about John the Baptist. So John chapter 1 verse 6 says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. Further down, in verse 29 of the same chapter, it says, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, just to get a little bit more clarification, um, we're going to go to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 says, Then Jesus came from Galilee, to the Jordan, to John, to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, John. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately went up from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So basically, this was God confirming to John. Remember, John's a prophet and prophets hear from God, directly from God. This is God confirming to John that Jesus, Yeshua, is the long-awaited Messiah. So we're going to fast forward a bit more. Um, after Jesus has done untold miracles, he's, you know, just, he's just done all this amazing stuff. Um, he's been preaching about the kingdom of heaven. He's been telling people that he is the Messiah. He's been telling people he is God in the flesh. He's been telling people that... He is the only way. There's no other way apart from through him. Um, you know, he was ruffling some feathers. He was upsetting a lot of people, particularly the religious establishment of the time. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, man, they was they was pretty peeved. You know what I'm saying? Um, so long story short, they had Jesus arrested. And um, yeah, Jesus was basically put on trial um, and he was put in front of the Roman executioner, a man called Pontius Pilate. In Luke's gospel, chapter 23, um, verse 1, it reads like this. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation 
and forbidden to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Basically, you say it. So he's not denying it. Um, then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. So basically, um, the Lamb of God was being inspected by Pontius Pilate. Um, and Pontius Pilate is saying that he finds no fault in him. Just like there can't be any fault with the sacrifices, you know, without spot, wrinkle or blemish. So Jesus is the Lamb of God. Pontius Pilate is expect inspecting him just like the just like the priest would inspect the animal before the animal is being sacrificed um, to make sure that there is no fault in the animal. Just like that, Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault in Jesus. So the Lamb of God was out, spot, wrinkle or blemish just before he's about to give himself as a sacrifice. Jesus was innocent. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was a perfect man. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knew what it was like to be human. He knew what it was like to be tempted. He, like, he, ident he can identify with us in every way because Jesus was fully man, yet he was fully God. Jesus was born to die, that he will save people from their sins. The name Jesus means he will save people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. Um... You know, because we all have fallen short of God's glory. We all sinned. We've all sinned. We've all broken one of the Ten Commandments, even if it's thou shalt not lie. You know, if you break one of the commandments, you're guilty of breaking them all. So nobody can keep the law. The law cannot save you. The law is more of a guideline of God's standard that none of us can keep. Um, <clears throat> Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. So for our sins, we deserve to die. That is our rightful punishment. God can't go around what he said. God don't change his mind. Um, yeah, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So Jesus died in accordance with God's law that we may be forgiven for our sins against God. And he came back to life on the third day defeat in death, just as he said he would. Um, another amazing fact is that Jesus died on the Day of Atonement. So while the lambs was being sacrificed in Jerusalem in the temple, on the Day of Atonement, Jesus was giving himself up as a sacrifice on the cross. Um, and I just, I think that's amazing. Um, the Lamb of God was being sacrificed on the cross at the same time the animal lambs was being sacrificed in the temple. Signifying that temple worship and animal sacrifice is finished. Um, God's temple is now your body. That's why God, that's why Jesus on the cross said, just before he, he died, before he took his last breath, he said, It is finished. Um, so yeah, God doesn't dwell in a temple of made of hands. Um, God dwells in the temple of your body. Now, Romans chapter 12 says, um, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So... Jesus had to die because we've sinned against God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. 
And according to the law, the sacrifice has to be perfect. Jesus is the only perfect man to live, to walk this earth. Perfect in word, thought, action, everything. Jesus was just perfect. So it had to be Jesus to give himself up, to shed his blood, to atone for our sins against God. So Jesus had to die that we might be saved if we believe that. Without Jesus dying, we don't have no access to God because we are wretched, dirty sinners who deserve to die because the wages of sin is death. So that's why Jesus died. Jesus died to save us. That's how he saves us. By living a perfect life and by giving himself up, himself up as a sacrifice. Bearing the sins of the world. Dying and rising again. Now the Bible says... <clears throat> If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and if you believe that God raised him from the dead you will be saved now I've said before it's not a head belief it's a belief that demands a response with actions from your life we can't do anything to be saved Jesus done it all but if we believe what Jesus done then by default we're going to want to do things for him because out of gratitude, out of love, out of awe. Um, and, and that's only reasonable. We're going to get it wrong. We're going to mess up all the time, probably every day. You know what I mean? Because we're human. But, you know, we're saved by grace through faith. We're not saved by the law. The law is there as a guideline, you know, to... to to keep us in check, if you like. But the law cannot save. Only Jesus saves through his death and through his resurrection. So believing in Jesus, our blessed hope is that we will die and we will rise again as Jesus did because that's what he promised. Um, and that is the gospel, you know. That is the reason that Jesus died <clears throat> It's the reason why you should care about why Jesus died and why you should do something about it. And I've said before, I believe that the Bible is true. I believe the Bible is 100% accurate, I, not just bits of it, all of it. Um, and that's why I accept this. But I've done research. Part of it is based on my faith, but another part of it is based on just basic practical facts historical facts that you can go and check on any credible site, um, any library. Um, I'm going to drop some links in the description box that you can um, go and go and check out to, um, you know, maybe some historical sources, um, some books maybe you can read and stuff to, to, to give you a little bit more clarity, some more meat um, for the authenticity of the Bible and other scriptures reliable. But, um, yeah, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. If Jesus didn't die, we're not forgiven. We're damned to hell. And if Jesus, did, if Jesus didn't rise, our preaching is in vain. Like Brother Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, if Jesus didn't die, me making this video is in vain. My whole life is in vain because I live in that hope. I do what I do because I believe the fact that Christ died and rose from the dead. I believe that. Um, so I want to encourage you guys to research, man. You know, this is the time of the Passover. We're in that season. You know, some people call it Easter. It's nothing to do with bunnies and chocolate eggs. Um, <clears throat> The season of Passover is the season that 
the God man gave up his life and was sacrificed, was crucified for you and for me. Um, yeah, for the remission of our sins. And if we believe that our sins are forgiven and we can walk in grace and not condemnation, not be frightened of hell, not be frightened of death even, because the Bible promises, it assures us, you know, that we will be resurrected and be with Jesus. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So I want to encourage you. Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Believe this. Research this. Come to a conclusion. Make up your mind. Um, I hope this has brought some clarity to what the Lamb of God is, who the Lamb of God is, what it means, and why Jesus died, and why you should care about it, and what it means for you, for your life. Because you're going to stand in front of God one day by yourself, and God's going to ask you, well, what did you do with the message? Because you can't say you didn't hear the message. You know, let each one be persuaded in their own mind. You know, don't take my word for it. Go and research. See if what I'm saying is real or not. See if there's substance to what I'm saying. Um, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Be blessed and be well.